What's up YouTube? My name is Smitty and welcome to my truck and travel channel. Today we're going to be doing some brakes and rotors on this 2019 Toyota RAV4. This process is pretty similar from 2019 to 2024 and a lot of different makes and models. Just some things change based on the make of the vehicle. I got quoted $1,200 from two different shops, so I figured I'd make a video showing how easy this job really is. I mean, it's not easy, but it's not that complicated either. But without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> okay, so this is practically everything you're gonna need to complete your brake job. Obviously, you need your brakes. This is the front, the front brakes, front rotors. Here's the rear brakes, rear rotors. You're obviously gonna need the jack of the vehicle to get to the brakes, so you need some sort of a jack. The scissor jack that comes with the vehicle is perfectly fine. If you have a floor jack, that's even better. You're gonna need some jack stands to secure your vehicle while it's in the air so it doesn't fall on you. Uh, you're gonna need some brake cleaner and some shop rags and caliber tool, basically to compress the caliber to get the new brakes and rotors on the vehicle and working properly. And you're gonna need a basic uh, socket set. I got this uh, 3 8 drive deep well socket set. Uh, and while I'm doing things, I'm gonna tell you the size that you need while I'm doing it so you don't have to guess. But first thing we gotta do is get the wheels off. So we gotta jack up the vehicle just a little bit off the ground, crack the wheels, and then we can raise the vehicle, put the jack stand, take the wheels off and start the job. So let's go ahead and knock this out. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need to do is get your jack. In my case, it's the scissor jack from the vehicle. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and lower it down. And where you're gonna to wanna to put this, there is a little circular spot right here. And if I take the camera, there's a frame right there. Just put that mounting pad right here on top of that bar right there, like this. Just go up a few turns and then go ahead and crack your lug nuts. And this is where I mounted it. So put that mounting pad right onto the frame of the vehicle. And while you're at it, go ahead and grab your jack stands and get them ready. They basically go right behind the front wheels and right in front of the back wheels but I'm only doing the front right now, so go ahead and position it right here so when you jack up the vehicle, you can go ahead and slide the jack stand up. Now that you're ready to crack your lugs so you can go ahead and jack the vehicle up, grab your lug wrench. If you have factory wheels, this lug wrench will work just fine on your lug nuts, but if you have special lug nuts, grab the wheel lock. As you can see, all the little spines in there. And when I say crack the lug nuts, just break them free. So. Done. Done. You're just breaking them so they're not locked. Because when you jack the vehicle and you try to take these off, the wheel will spin. And always go in a star pattern. So if you start here, go here, then here, then here, then here. If you start here, go here, 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 here. So just go in a star pattern. Now you're ready to jack up the vehicle. If you're using the factory floor jack or the scissor jack, the lug wrench is also the handle to jack the vehicle. So you'll need this little hook and then the actual lug wrench. You'll put this little hook into this little hole. So it'll slide in just like that, giving you a handle to turn the jack like that. When you have your vehicle jacked up, as you can see, there's daylight underneath the tire. Go ahead and jack, get your jack stand to the level that you want. As you can see, there's some grooves right here. This is where your jack or your jack stand goes. And then go ahead and set the other side. After you get your jack stand set, you can go ahead and lower this jack. So that way your car is sitting just on the jack stands. I don't remove the jack, I keep the jack in place, but I let the jack stands hold the vehicle in the air. And you'll actually hear it. That was the vehicle landing on the jack stands. So now the jack's not really doing anything, 
but I just jack it up just a little bit to have a little bit more peace of mind holding it in three places, so one, two, and three, instead of just two slots. But that's just me, you don't have to do that. Okay, the very next thing I do after I get the jack stand set and the jack set, I give it a push. I wanna make sure it's safe when I take my wheels off. You see, it's, it's not really budging because it's, it's, it's held really, really well. You don't have to shake it really hard, just give it a couple of nudges to make sure it's set in place and it's not gonna move and it's not gonna fall on you. All right, now you're ready to take your wheels off. And when they get tight like that, if you're on the last one, just move your tire left and right, up or down, and then it should come off. Once you got all your lug nuts off, set those aside and then pull your tire off. And what I do is I put the tire so I can sit on it. Just like that. That way I have a good working area and I'm also not under the vehicle if the jack stand fails or if the jack fails or if any crazy thing happens while I'm working on the vehicle. Okay, then now that we got the wheel off, this is your actual brake assembly. So right here is your brake rotor, if you didn't know. This is your brake caliber. This is your caliber bracket that holds the caliber to the wheel assembly. And your brake pads are right up in here. You can't really see them until you take the brake caliber off. And to get the rotor off, you have to take the caliber off, the caliber mounting bracket, and then you can get to the actual rotor. Okay, if you're just doing your brakes, you don't even have to take off anything except for one bolt that holds this caliber on. The caliber is held on by two bolts, one here and one here I'll show you in a second. And if you're just doing your brakes, just take off the bottom bolt for your caliber and then the caliber will swing up. If it doesn't swing up freely, you might have to loosen this one just so it'll free up and then you can take your brake pads off. I'll show you how to do that right now. And the two bolts that hold on the caliber is right here and then the second one is right down here. So one, two. All right, and for these bolts for the caliber, they're 14 millimeter. All you gotta do is break it and then you can spin it off. And most of the time, you can swing it up just like this to get to your brake pads. Brake pads. A lot of times you'll need something to hold it up though. I had to grab a bungee so I could show you. So this is how I typically do it. If I'm just doing brakes, I wrap the bungee through the caliber like so. And then I will swing it up here. That way it'll hold it for me and then I can go ahead and change out my brakes. But as you can see, these brakes are pretty, pretty good. I don't even need to change them. I had a lot of squealing, so I figured I'd pop them off to see exactly where the noise is coming from. And the inner brake is just the same. But as of right now, these brake pads are pretty good to go. I might have to put a little grease on this. This is a, to make it stop squealing right here on the back. If you needed to change the rotor, just go ahead and pop that top one off. Just like that, there's your bolt. Set it aside. And then you can move your brake out of the way. A lot of people just set it right here. But again, what I do, I grab the bungee and then it'll hold it up out of the way for you. And you don't want to kink this hose because it's just a rubber hose. And I didn't know you couldn't see it as a bad angle, but to secure the caliber, I basically bungee it to this shock right here or this strut. As you can see, one hook's there, the other hook's there. It goes around the caliber, so it's not going anywhere. If you need to change your rotors, after you get the caliber off, it's another two bolts to get this bracket off. It's this bolt here and this bolt right down here. If you can see that right there where my middle finger's touching and then my middle finger's touching. I can't tell because there's a weird angle in here. So take those two bolts off and this bracket will come off and then you can slide this rotor right off. And how you get that off is a 17 millimeter.
Get that first bottle one out. And then, then the bracket slides straight off. Now how you get the rotor off, you can do it one of two ways. You can, if you're gonna replace the rotor, you can just beat it off with a rubber mallet. Just be very careful where safety protection, hit it from the outside or from the inside out, like that way, hit it that way, hit it that way. And then you want to hit it random spots to loosen it up. Or you can use the bolts that came out of the caliber bracket. When you first took off the caliber, there's these little holes. You can see one right there. And you can see one right there. You take the two bolts that took the caliber off and basically screw it into those two holes. Just like that. If I can get it to start in the bottom, there we go. And then as you tighten these up, that bolt will go in and push the hub, which will loosen the caliber, or the rotor, sorry. So as you're tightening it, it'll screw in and push off, and then it'll break it free. You'll have to keep going and keep going. I'm not taking the rotors off, but as you can see, that's what it's doing is pushing it in and it'll push it out and then it'll break it free. And then putting it back on is just as easy. The main thing you gotta do when you put it back on, the new brakes, you gotta take these clips off, clean up this area real good, put a little uh, grease in here so it'll slide. Same with the tops, clean these off real good, put a little grease so the brake pads will slide because how it works is when you press the brakes, these actually slide just like these. To put these back on, grab your bracket, grab your bolt. I do the top one first to hold it. And there's torque specs for every nut and bolt on a vehicle. I necessarily don't know what these are, but just look them up. I just tighten them good and tight. Good and tight. After you get your caliber bracket mounted, grab your brake pads, typically your new ones, but mine are in really good shape, so I'm just gonna put these back on. You're gonna wanna put it in like this at an angle, because as you can see, there's a little bracket right here that, that moves. I don't know if you can see that. But basically just push it up against that little bracket and then slides it in just like that. Do the same thing with the back one. A slider in, then grab your caliber, swing it around. And if you replace your brakes, you will need that caliber tool to push this piston down so you can get, because you can see it's not flush. That caliber tool will slide that piston down to match this height right here. That way you can get the new brake pads on and just like that put your bolts back in the caliber to the caliber mounting bracket when you go to tighten these caliber bolts as you can see this little part spins right here so there's no tightening it you'll have to hold on to it and to hold on to it you need a 17 millimeter wrench to hold it while you tighten it. And again, there's torque specs to this, so torque it down to the right foot pounds. But yeah, just do the same thing to the bottom. Next thing you wanna do after you finish buttoning everything up and everything's put together and it's torqued to the right specs, if everything looks good, look at my makeshift light, I use a headlamp. <laughs> You're gonna wanna put your, uh, your tire back on. How I do it, sit right in front of it with my legs open and I use my feet to line it back up and pick it up, just like that. And I use my hands just to push it in. And put your lugs back on. 
I hand thread them a few threads. So there we go. After I get it hand tight, I push it as far as I can get it, and then I tighten it. You won't be able to tighten it all the way until you get it on the ground, but you can get it pretty, pretty close. Again, star pattern. And as you got those tight, go ahead and work on the other side and then work on the back. And then, yeah, you're done. All right, now that you got the front all done, uh, mine is torquing the wheels down. What you have to do is you have to raise the vehicle up far enough so you can get the jack stands out and then you can start lowering it to the ground. But don't lower it all the way to the ground. Lower it for when you've got the majority of the weight of the vehicle on the tires, then torque the wheels, and then you can lower it all the way to the ground. Now that you got it jacked up so you can get the jack stands out, all you got to do is push up this handle. It's going to get loud here in a second. And that will drop down. You can pull the jack stand right out. Do the same thing to the other side. All right, now that you got your jack stands out, Go ahead and start lowering it to the ground until you're, you start seeing weight on the inside of your tire, like right up in here. You'll see it starting to bulge out a little bit. A little bit more. All right, that's good enough. Now go around and twerk all your lug nuts. Now that you got your wheels torqued, go ahead and lower it down to the ground the rest of the way. After you get it in the ground, I like to check it just one more time. You don't have to do this. It's just, just something that I do. If you have a torque wrench, this would be a good time to check your torque to make sure it did torque to what you wanted it to torque to. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this one, guys. Uh, if you learned anything, please leave a like and consider subscribing right down below and becoming part of our squad. Squad, 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 squad. And yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I get to return all these parts and get my money back because money is definitely tight right now. And I didn't need the, uh, the to do a brake job. I just needed to put some lube on the brake pads and now I have no squeal. But yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.